Hello, welcome again to Holy Spirit 30 and it is day 24. I'm glad that you've made it this far. Um, there's not one day that isn't a blessing. So I want you to go back and listen and listen and listen. Um, even if you've listened before, you can go back again. The beauty of this is that in um, uh, this is the month of June, I believe, um, where we're putting out this content. You can go back in July. You can go back in August. You can go back again. And you'd be amazed at how much of a blessing this is going to be to you. All right. We've been speaking about the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the gift. The Holy Spirit is the gift. And the more we fellowship with Him, the more we know Him, the more we relate with Him, the deeper we go in our fellowship with Him, the easier it is for these gifts of the Spirit to find expression through us. Big thoughts and facts that have been shared. The Holy Spirit wants to express these gifts, make himself visible, manifest through our lives, through every believer. While certain people, because of their offices and the assignments they have in the body of Christ, will have certain gifts more predominantly operational through their lives, um, every believer can function in every gift. All nine gifts can find expression through your life. The Holy Spirit is looking for channels and vessels to express himself through, um, irrespective of who you are, irrespective of your um, position in the body. Any and every person can function in the gifts of the Spirit. And we shared as well extensively about how that this uh, operating in the supernatural ought to be natural to the believer. We looked at two examples in the life of Jesus when he met Nathaniel. How casual he just said it. He said, I saw you under the tree there when he met um, the Samaritan woman and spoke to her about her husband so casually. I mean, the supernatural had become the norm for Jesus Christ. He goes to Lazarus' tomb and then you see the um, working of miracles. You see gifts of healing there. You see the gift of special faith there. It takes the gift of special faith to say to someone who is four days dead, to rise up from the grave. That's the gift of special faith. It takes the working of miracles for a dead person to be restored, natural laws reversed. That's working of miracles. Working of miracles reverses laws and all the rest. And it takes the gifts of healing to, to heal Lazarus of whatever killed him or whatever made him die. So you see three gifts in operation all at the same time, so casually in the life of Jesus Christ. And you know why these gifts were casually in operation? Because he was always in the spirit. He was always in the spirit. He maintained an atmosphere of the spirit. So he didn't have to charge himself up. You know, it's like somebody who has watched 10 movies and then there's a demand. How are you going to function in the spirit when you just finished um, a series of 10 movies and then there's a demand for somebody we seek? Then you have to go, and you are trying to charge up yourself because you never created an atmosphere, a habitat that it makes it easy for the Holy Spirit to find expression through your life. So um, creating the atmosphere and the habitat is so important, so vitally important. Now, we're going to move into the second category of gifts. Remember 1 Corinthians 12, and I should read again verse um, 8 and verse 11. Or we, verse 7, pardon me, and verse 11. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, not some man, not the pastor, not the vicar, not the prelate, every man to profit with all. And verse 11, but all this worketh that one and the self-same Spirit, dividing to every man, severally as he wills. So as the Holy Spirit wills, he divides severally in whatever measure is required. Because many times, the situation at hand may require more than just one gift. And so he just brings in all that is required and all of the rest. And I want you to believe this, that the Holy Spirit wants to express himself through you. He wants to make himself visible through your life. He wants to make himself manifest through your life. Every believer. I want you to believe this. So we spoke about utterance gifts and I told you those are the most important gifts. The most important gifts are the utterance gifts because utterance is the doorway to the supernatural. Utterance is the doorway to the realm of the spirit. But then let's look at some other gifts here. And you know, this is not a Bible school or anything, so we can't go in depth into all of these things. But I mean, you have enough material to get you started. We have what we call the word of wisdom, uh, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. These three gifts are what we call revelation gifts. So we have utterance gifts, which is prophecy, tongues, interpretation. And then we have revelation gifts, which is word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Now, utterance gifts say something. Revelation gifts 
reveal something, show something, utterance gifts say something, revelation gifts show something, power gifts, which we'll talk about tomorrow, do something. So that's the way to understand it. Utterance gifts say something, revelation gifts show something, power gifts do something. Now, so utterance gifts don't necessarily show, they just say. There's no um, foretelling. There's no element of prediction. Are you following what I'm saying here? In utterance gifts. Now, because these gifts function so closely together, sometimes you're not able to tell because utterance gifts many times are the vehicle for other gifts. So I can um, start out with, uh, prophecy and move into word of knowledge. And so they're usually closely related, but if you're to separate them completely, um, utterance gifts don't reveal something. They say something. Revelation gifts show and reveal something. All right, so let's look at it this way. Let's start with word of knowledge. It's a word of knowledge. Now, remember all these gifts of the Spirit are spiritual gifts. So this is not knowledge that you acquire by reading or by hearing, or by going to school. It's not supernatural intellect. Some people say, oh, this person is so intelligent, so he has a word of knowledge gift. No, that's not true. A word of knowledge is a fragmentary knowledge, a fragmentary information. You see, a word is a part of a sentence, a fragment of a sentence. So it's a fragment of God's knowledge concerning the past and the present. So God reveals a fragment of his knowledge concerning the past and the present of certain situations, certain persons, certain circumstances. So a word of knowledge, for example, um, I, I see someone here and you're watching this video. You're watching me right now. You're watching from, um, you're watching from um, the United Kingdom and you're watching in your room. Your, your, thank you, Holy Spirit. You're, you're actually in and out of sleep as you're watching this. And suddenly you're startled back um, to consciousness because of what I just said. Now, you may think I just gave an example, but right there in the comment section, I want somebody to let us know because that's a word of knowledge for somebody. I, I just functioned in the gift of the spirit. Is that easy? Which means if I switch and um, I, I lean in into the Holy Spirit a bit more than I am leaning into the natural and I'm a bit more conscious about the realm of the Spirit, I can catch in, cash in into, um, yep, I can cash in into, the, you know, God is all-knowing and then he gives me um, some knowledge. So, for example, look at that there. Um, you're watching this from the United Kingdom. That's a present information. You're feeling sleepy. That's a present information. Um, an address. I, I didn't give anything in the past there. But you see, when Jesus said to the woman, you've had this number of husbands and all the rest, that's a word of knowledge. He knew supernaturally something about the woman even before. Uh, are you getting what I'm saying here? And I, I just intentionally quickly um, practice that for you now to let you see how easy it is. That's how easy it is. If I lean into the Holy Spirit just a bit, then I begin to hear and begin to see into that realm, and it's not because I'm a pastor, it's because I am a believer. And the more we pray and we are more conscious of the realm of the Spirit, the more we are able to tap into the knowledge that is available, available in that spirit realm. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's that easy. So it is um, fragmentary information from the past and the present about people, situations, circumstances that the Holy Spirit brings to you. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, um, as against word of wisdom, which is fragmentary information about the future. You see, it, it's God showing you something about the future. And usually that word of wisdom comes with a counsel. It will usually come with a counsel, with an instruction or a direction because God is showing you the future. So, for example, God begins to show you um, how that this and this is going to happen. In the next couple of years, this and this is going to happen. And so you find out that word of wisdom is the primary gift that prophets function in. Because they see into the future. They have knowledge about what has not happened and what will yet happen. Are you getting what I'm saying here? And they are, they are I mean, you, you, I hope you know that it's by word of knowledge Moses wrote the first 
um, the book of Genesis, the first half of Genesis. Moses wrote the book of Genesis, but he wasn't there when the earth was created. He wasn't there when God said, let there be light. How did he know? Because he heard and saw into the past. And he wrote those things. And then he said to us, Moses said, a prophet shall God raise after my order, after my kind. Talking about Jesus, that's a word of wisdom. He was speaking about the future. Most of the prophecies in the Old Testament were words of wisdom. Uh, unto us a, a, a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulders, his name shall be called wonderful. All of that was word of wisdom. There was no Jesus at the time. They were prophesying. Now, please note, I use the word prophesying, but what were they doing exactly? They were speaking a word of wisdom on the platform of what? Utterance, prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So you see the difference between a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. A word of wisdom usually speaks to the future and usually brings instruction, usually brings direction and all the rest. Now, I didn't say this yesterday, but it's worth saying today. Prophecy, because it does not contain usually a foretelling element, what Paul says prophecy does in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and Comfort. That's all it does. It edifies you, builds you up spiritually, exhorts you, strengthens you, comforts you. But there's no direction. You didn't say speak it. Either prophesied, speak it unto direction. Direction usually will come from a word of wisdom. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Now, the third revelation gift there is um, uh, okay. Let me give you an example. We had the 31st night, and then the Lord began to speak to me. This was before COVID. And you know, we are very careful to jump on the bandwagon and say, we prophesied, we prophesied it. Now, God didn't say to me there will be COVID. But God said to me, and many of you watching these videos, and if, if there's anyone who remembers, you can just put it in the comment section to help those who probably are not acquainted with this. And I gave a word, and I said, the Lord is saying to me that the year 2020 is going to be like AD and BC. That in the same way we say that the death of Jesus Christ broke time into two parts where we say that 100 BC, 100 this, and we use that reference. I said 2020 will be a reference point. And what is going to happen is we are going to say pre-2020 and post-2020. When I was saying it, I, I was shocked. I mean, I said, what do you mean by this? Do you agree with me that everything is pre-2020 and post-2020? It's pre-COVID and post In fact, it's an era. They call it post-COVID era. I never knew anything was going to happen like that. I remember I, I said, I mean, the words of, of words of wisdom I gave, I said that year, many institutions are going to be shaken and all of the rest. And, all. and it happened exactly as the Lord said to me. In Nigeria, we had, um, I think it was in 2021, we had some amazing ministries just hit the limelight in 2021. He thought to fall that were just little ministries. Now, but at the end of 2020, I said to the church, the Lord said to me, he said, the old God, these were the words exactly I remember now. He said, the God is changing hands. He said, the old gods are living. He said, and I'm raising a brand new set of ministries. I mean, some of, I mean, in 2021, the largest prayer platform in the world came out of our country. And I just said this a few months before. I just prophesied it. Now, that's a word of wisdom. Are you getting what I'm saying here? And if, if you genuinely believe that Jesus said the Holy Spirit will show us things to come, then you should believe that the word of wisdom can function through you. Because how will he show you things to come? Through the instrumentality of the word of wisdom. And then designing of spirits. What is designing of spirit? It is not um, being critical. It is not, you know, a lot of people are critical and they say, I can design your spirit. <laughs> That's nonsense. Um, they say, I am. And it doesn't mean to be designing. No. Designing of spirit is designing of. It tells you what you are designing. Spirit. The word design, um, designing of spirit, that gift means to see and to hear into the realm of the spirit. So God, that's, that's when you talk about the seer's office, the office of the prophet that sees, all right? So you see and to hear into the realm of the spirit. So, and you can, see, you can see the human spirit, you can see angels, you can see demons, you can see God, you can see Jesus. So visions and everything comes under the purview of designing of spirits. 
Do you see that? Okay. And to hear into the realm of the spirit. So let me give you an example. How did the writer of Job see and know that when the sons of God gathered, Satan was there? Is there enough spirits? How, are you following what I'm saying here? How did Moses see God when he says, I saw the backside of God? Is there enough spirits? How did Zachariah see the angel that came to see him? Descending of spirits, because normally you cannot see angels. They are present. You're not seeing them because that gift is not in operation. But once the gift is in operation, you begin to see and to hear into the realm of the spirit. This is different from discernment. And discernment, for the most part, for many believers, is being critical. No. Now, guess what? The Holy Spirit wants all of these gifts to function through you. But how is that going to happen? By giving yourself to utterance. That's how, that's how it's going to happen. Now here's today's big bold fact. When he, the spirit of truth is come, he shall show you things to come. If you're not seeing things to come, then you don't know the Holy Spirit. You can and you should know things to come. Welcome again to Holy Spirit 30. I'm glad that you've joined us this far. Trust God that this has been to your edification and for spiritual mastery. I'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.